Godot 4.4 is out and as always this version is packed with lots of new features and improvements. I'm going to share with you the most interesting features that caught my attention. Before we start, I want to thank the Godot team and every contributors for their work. You're doing an amazing job and it's thanks to you that Godot keeps growing. The first obvious feature to talk about is the new tab you can see in the inspector. You're probably aware of it, it's the game tab, which lets you run the game inside Godot. This is a similar feature to what you have in Unity, and it's available for Windows, Linux and Android for now. On top of running the game in the editor, you can also override the camera and select objects. Pretty neat feature, especially if you work on a single screen. Continuing with new editor features, object snapping lets you easily snap objects to other objects when moving them in the editor. This makes placing things in creating levels much easier. The Godot 3D editor keeps getting better and I love it. We now have tooltips when hovering in the code editor, which gives you a bunch of information about your code and it even includes your own documentation. No need to start typing again to get the information you need about the function you're using. For some people, the Godot editor is lacking, so seeing new features like that is very exciting. A new export type called export tool button lets you add buttons directly in the editor, which is incredibly useful for your tool scripts. No need to use booleans anymore, you can easily add a nice button to perform your one-time operation in the editor. If you want to know more about tools you can make in Godot, watch this video after. This feature lets you declare uniform that will only affect the instance of the shader, even if the material is shared. Before that, in Godot, changing a uniform on a shared material would modify every other material. Now, you can still share the material, benefiting from batching without juggling materials. This feature was available in 3D and is now also available in 2D. The new UID system allows files to be tracked much better, which should make collaboration more pleasant. Before that, the file IDs would change every time someone would touch them, which was creating lots of useless differences when using Git. Now, for each file imported, a UID file is created, and you should commit it to avoid the problem I just discussed. The problem was discussed extensively, and this solution is proving to be very, very useful. This video is made possible by supporters on Patreon. If you want to help me continue making this kind of content, you can support me there. It helps a lot. I've noted three new cool things coming to the animation world. Recently, a new skeleton modifier was introduced to add modifiers to skeletons more easily. And the look at modifier is a new way to handle rotation towards a point, usually used to make a character look at something, for example. Then, the spring bone simulator lets you wiggle chain bones. We usually see that to implement simple cloth or objects attached to a character, like an antenna, for example. Finally, the introduction of markers in animation lets you play a specific part of an animation or jump to a specific part. You can, of course, query these markers through code. It's an easy way to allow looping a specific part of an animation or jumping to a specific part, for example. Curves can now extend their domain outside of 0, 1, which is a small change that can make using curves a bit easier. It means you can set the domain to whatever you want, which could make querying the curve value at a specific x a bit easier without needing to normalize. Side note, I'm thinking of making a video about curves to show you how powerful and versatile they are for controlling difficulty, behavior, and even tweens. Let me know if you're interested. Godot has been capable of accessing your camera for a while, but it was limited to mobile devices in 3.x and only macOS and iOS in 4.x. It's now available on Linux too. I love features like that because they broaden the spectrum of what Godot can be used for. It's interesting to do AR applications, games that could be controlled with a camera or just use a camera in weird ways, or to just create apps. Yes, it's finally here. Jolt is now integrated as a physics engine directly in Godot. No need to use the GD extension anymore. If you lived under a rock, Jolt is a very powerful 3D physics engine that was developed for the Horizon game and is open source. It's been the default physics engine for a lot of people because it provides good performance and stability. Seeing it integrated in the engine is awesome and a great step forward. Congrats to the people who worked on that, it was apparently a lot of work. Note that this feature is marked as experimental for now, so please give it a try and report if you have any issues. 
Godot has been suffering from shader compilation stutters forever, and it was somewhat fixed in 3.x and should now be nearly gone with the final version of the Uber shader. This is basically a flexible shader that is compiled early and allows displaying something as a fullback while the real shaders are compiled in the background. Hopefully this means no stutter when running a game for the first time. After the first time, a cache is created, which normally means stutters won't happen again. This feature is exciting because it has been a problem for a while. And that's it for my selection of Go to 4.4 features. You can read the blog post to see the full list of features and give it a try yourself. You can donate to Godot if you want to support the work. Thanks again to the Godot core team and all the contributors for their work. See you in a future video for Godot 4.5.